All right, people, welcome to this very special episode of the Vision to Mission podcast today. We have a longtime friend, a great man of faith, a man of family, a man of serving, Mr. Brian Halstead, joining us today talking about building a family legacy. So, Brian, welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Hey, good. Thanks. Glad to be here. Appreciate that. Yeah, I've Absolutely. Known you quite a long time. How long's it been? <laughs> oh, I, <did. laughs> I want to appear as younger, but I'm pretty right, sure it's right? been about 20 years. I'm putting you on the spot. Couple of decades, bro. <laughs> 2001, around yeah, there somewhere. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so just to kind of give everyone who's listening a little bit of context and background, uh, you know, Brian and I are, are both Christians and we both belong to the same family of churches. And, uh, you know, we've met each other a long time ago when looking at God's word and, you know, working to bring ourselves closer to God and to have a relationship um, with him back when we were definitely at different uh, times in our lives as young single men, um, young single professionals. And now a lot of time has elapsed, uh, both of us with families, both of us with a lot of responsibilities. And so our friendship has spanned over a couple decades. And I'm just uh, really grateful to be able to spend this time with Brian. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> Did I encapsulate it well enough? <laughs> uh, maybe you left out the part that I probably, uh, wouldn't have been a, become a disciple if it wasn't for you. You were in my foundational Bible studies, challenged me, encouraged me, and kept pointing me back to God. So for well, what it's amen. worth, bro, thank you. Absolutely. I just, I try to be a useful vessel <laughs> for sure. Um, I do my best. So thank you so much. So we're going to just kind of dive right in. And as you and I were just talking about a few minutes ago, um, I, I, in my heart, I really believe that you have a, a story that people need to hear. I think you have a, a an upbringing and a family background, a life background that it will help people and bring value to them and touch them. So can you just, well, let's just go ahead and start off just by sharing a little bit about your life, your upbringing, um, and kind of over the years that led you to make certain decisions that even brought you to God. Sure, sure. Gosh, uh, how far back you want to go? I mean, when you say upbringing, man, um, I want to go back to to the toys on the floor, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> as far back as you as you think would be relevant, it's not a problem. Sure, sure. Okay, okay. So I'll uh, try to keep it uh, uh, contextual, right? So absolutely. Uh, I grew up uh, Washington State. Um, you know, my my family um, we uh, have always owned land. Uh, my mm. grandfather has eighty acres. Uh, my dad has uh, 40 acres, and then I have now 20-some uh, acres, right? So, you know, it's dwindling down. But, um, right. you know, my dad was a blue-collar, uh, hardworking guy, a welder. Uh, so, you know, when you mix in uh, what what do people do for their day jobs, and then they, uh, you know, nights and weekends uh, have, um, you know, some some component of farming. Um, agriculture, whether we, we've had, uh, we've had pigs, chickens, uh, sheep, uh, over the years, we've had horses, but we've always had a garden and we've always had fruit trees. And, um, uh, we, my dad, um, my grandfolks have been on a farm, you know, for 50 some years. Um, my dad, my grandfather worked for, uh, the state and was, you know, a highwayman, uh, you know, doing paving and all sorts of like department of transportation kind of work. And then, you know, on his 80 acres had cattle, um, uh, you know, uh, 30, 40 fruit trees and, a, you know, a few acre garden. So growing up, our family, you know, didn't have much in the way of means. And so I would spend the summers with my grandfolks. I'm out of school and we couldn't really afford daycare. So where did I go? To the grandfolks. And so I split more wood. Uh, <laughs> we would mm -hmm. bounce around in the truck and, and go get, you know, wood, falling down wood. You can get a permit uh, in the Ochicos out there in Oregon. And um, we would, you know, buck rounds into the truck, take them, split them and, you know, help, uh, help grandpa with, with some of his, uh, uh wood for the winter. Um, you know, but that, that kind of, 
I only bring up that one story because there's lots of hard work on a farm, right? Um, mm. you know, heating the house, uh, feeding the, the livestock, um, pruning trees, uh, you know, gardening in and of itself is for many a very arduous and difficult task, right? It's, it's not fun. Nobody likes to weed. Um, and so, you know, growing up, man, uh, it, it, it was, it was a, a very, um, uh, kind of eye-opening experience, right? You know, to live off the land, what does it take? Uh, what what does my grandfolks do? What does my dad do? And, you know, what do I do now, right? And so uh, I, I, I cherish that, you know, in many ways, because I think those are kind of the roots that run deep. Um, how do you really truly understand uh, abundance, right? Uh, mm. The abundance from God, like you just, there. Amen for blessings and, and God is, is, is uh, blesses in the most amazing ways. But when you plant a seed in the ground, one seed, and that plant goes to seed and you have now hundreds or more seed, you really connect with God's math, the math of abundance. And what, what, uh, that just stuck with me. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I was in and around it, but never really, had much interest in it, right? A lot of, a lot of folks, uh, at most, most generations, you know, it's hard to have a second generation, third generation farmer because people want to get away from, you know, that lifestyle. And I did as well. But those lessons that I learned very early on stuck with me. No, absolutely. And it's, you know, so you said a couple of things and I wrote it down. I might steal that quote from you because you're talking about, you know, the math of abundance is God's math. I love that, you know, and it's biblical. You know, and yeah. it's true, you know, and how he teaches us to multiply. Right. Um, and, and I believe that God's um, expectation of us is not just to simply add, but to multiply. Right. Yeah. As as he's definitely taught us. And one of the things that you said you just mentioned really, really touched me because, um, you know, you grew up on a farm. You grew up farming. Right. You grew up, you know, doing the hard um, manual labor with your, 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 your dad and your family, right. And blue collar working people, you know? Um, and you know, I grew up differently. I grew up in an urban setting, right. With blue collar working people. And the thing is, it's like, but a lot of the, the here's the thing though, the, the, the concepts that you learned growing up about farming, about manual labor, right about planting and watering and watching multiplication, having your own land, um, you know, being a land owner, you, you kept those things with you throughout your life. You know, those are things that stayed with you and, and it's now serving you well and it's serving your family well, right? And in a lot of my other videos and podcasts, I talk about young men and young women who didn't grow up, unfortunately, with those lessons being taught to them. Right. So they they don't have anything to go back and grab. Right. They don't have anything to hold on to and to bring with them as they're getting older to figure out what what on earth am I going to do with my life? I don't think it's about a profession, but I think it's about how do you build your character? Right. What are some of those foundational lessons that you learn as you're growing up that kind of help you with your decision making and help you in the direction that you're going in your life? So I really admire that. And I admire your parents in that aspect for what they've taught you, because now your children, as I'm sure we'll get into, are looking at you and they're looking at what you're doing and they're going to end up passing that down and passing that down and passing that down. Right. And that's an absolute that's an absolute blessing. So you said Washington State and what brought you over here to the East Coast? Um, so good. Good question. Um I, I ended up um, uh, being able to run fast and turn left, right? I, I got into <laughs> track and field. Okay. And uh, uh, my freshman year uh, in the state of Oregon, so so I ended up going from my, my folks split up. I was with my dad for quite some time, and then I ended up moving with my mom. And freshman year uh, in high school, uh, I took fifth in, in the state of Oregon. Um, and so, you know, that kind of kicked off my track and field career. And then eventually, um, you know, middle distance guy, 400 and 800, um, mm. wound up running, uh, being asked to come, uh, run, uh, out at Georgetown here in Washington, DC. Um, 
and and I and and I didn't want I didn't want to I, I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to start a construction company. I, I was like, no, you know, blue collar, right? Nobody in my family went to college. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, man, you know, ah, college. And you know, the recruiter uh, came out, sat next to my grandfather. This was this was my senior year, um, state finals. I, I ended up uh, <laughs> very close call. I I, I, I kind of. You ever see that down to the wire, like the horse race where they actually have to do like the video rewind to tell yeah, the final like, finish. one of those, like I came from behind, there was a guy that was first and then like by a millimeter ended up taking first. So it was, it was, it was a crazy story. But anyways, this recruiter sat down next to my grandfather and was like, you know, I'd really like your, your grandson to come run for me. And, you know, I, I took what my grandfather said you know, as gospel, right? You know, it, it, you know, recruiters, recruiters, recruiter. But um, my grandfather's like, you know, hey, you can always start a construction company. Why don't you go uh, see this thing through and, and see how far you can go? Uh, do your mm -hmm. best and run hard. And I did, right? And so I left my family. I left mm -hmm. everything I knew. I mean, I, I, you know, it was a very difficult thing to do. And I, Came out here in 1998 and started running uh, track and field at Georgetown. And uh, that, that's what I've, I've been out here ever since, right? Um, that's what brought me out here. No, that's fantastic. And while you were up at, well, down at Georgetown, I was right up the street at American, you know, yeah. so we were like right there, you know, at the, you know, kind of at the turn here. And so, you know, coming, let's, let's talk about like, you, you came out and you started running track. You uh, grew up farming and you wanted to, you wanted to be an entrepreneur. You wanted to be a business owner. You wanted to start your own construction company. Right. And so what, what gave you that, that kind of mission mindset in your heart, you know, to, to do that? Was it you know, just because of your family tradition, right? In your family legacy, or was it something that, that you wanted to do, you know, for yourself, um, for the future? Great question. Great question. Yeah. I, you know, to the extent that someone is exposed to something, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as you see something, it's hard to unsee that, right? Mm. As soon as you learn something, it's hard to unlearn that. So, you know, my dad has owned several properties over the years. And one of the things that we would do would buy a piece of land, um, subdivide it and build. Um, and, you know, I, never really, I was very young. I never really picked up the hammer and actually, you know, drove tons and tons of nails, but to actually see bare dirt and then tear it up, put a foundation and build a house and then start living in that house. You know, when you see everything from nothing to something, mm -hmm. start connecting the dots, that sticks with you. Um, you know, and so to whatever degree you're exposed to something and you gain a certain level of confidence, um, mm -hmm. I, I think, I think that's really, how do you get enough confidence to start something? Um, I, you have to be exposed to it. No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And as you were saying, how do you get enough confidence to start something? I think about that all the time. Honestly, you know, just in, in different in different aspects, you know, I think that how can I say this? Like to really kind of go head forth, right? You know, headstrong into something. I think I think you have to just it has to like overwhelm you. It has to bubble up so so deeply in you. You have to have such a, a, a conviction about it that I just want to do this or I have to do this, right? I must do this, right? Um, there's a motivational speaker named uh, Dr. Eric Thomas, and there's a, one of the videos he has, and it says, I can, I will, I must, you know? And I think about that pretty much because it's like the the can portion is you have the capability, right? You, you have the physical, mental, and even possibly uh, financial and resources capability. You know, and the will is, oh, yes, you know what? I have the confidence. I will do this, right? It's possible. And the must is a, a deeper level of confidence. It's a conviction, right? 
It's, it's an attraction. It's a magnetism that says, you know what? I must do this, you know, you know, for my life. And so kind of thinking about that, you know, the, 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 the title of this podcast is kind of building a family legacy. You are building a legacy, Brian. Right. And so kind of, as we get into this, how for you and your own personal life, how would you define the word legacy? Kind of looking back, what you're doing right now and, and what you're building for the future. Wow, what a question. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, well. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. I think you really have to start with the belief that the future uh, something in the future is better, okay. right? You know, when you when you when you put that carrot on a stick, something internal motivation is going to produce an external result. Hmm. Um. Uh. So I've got, I got. Uh, so I so saw that uh, we could probably. You know, I don't know how you're going to edit this, but I've got several uh, examples. So I don't know to what extent you want to go into several examples. You know, that's kind of a good segue. That's fine. We, we can do whatever we need to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to throw a couple at you just, just so you kind of know some of my notes, right? Uh, you know, are you speaking, uh, the, the legacy language, right? Teaching your kids to dream. Um, you know, I got a couple things about my two year old holding a set of keys. She has a plastic set of keys in her hand and I'm going to build her a house. And, uh, let's, what are some other illustrations? Um, I teach my kids how to dream, um, mm -hmm. um a, a touch on, you know, a, a couple of examples. So, uh, wh wh where do you want me to go? Cause I, I can go several different ways from here. I can talk right. about some context well, and dig into the kids or wh where do you want to go? Well, let's, let's start with this. So you have land, right? I know I've gotten all the different pictures yep, yep, and yep, yep, you know, yep. you've sent the videos and I'm like, what is Brian doing? <laughs> you know, and I'm actually yeah. amazed. Yeah. I don't know. Did you study engineering? What did like, what did you study when you were at Georgetown? Uh, psychology. Okay. All right. So let, let's stop right there. Right. <laughs> you study psychology, but, Dude, I'm not going to lie. It seems like you, you it seems like you know how to build a house from the foundation up. Like if I if someone just said, hey, do you know someone personally who's close who could just build? I'm like, yeah, I know uh, Brian Halstead. And I don't even know how you know how to do it. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, you know, from the drywall to the plumbing, to the electrical, to the foundation. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, you God has blessed you with a lot of gifts, abilities and talents innately. You're you've cleared out some land somewhere 20 miles, 30 miles south of here, and you're building. Why are you doing that? Let's just kind of start right there. Okay, okay. Before I answer that question, I'm gonna throw something at you. Absolutely. So so you know, you mentioned earlier uh capabilities or, or mm -hmm. skills even, right? Um, or kind of what is an internal driver. You know, I I, I think um <sighs> Part of it is is motivation, right? Part of it is you know God given uh, talents that we're given. But then mm -hmm. you know what what is our aptitude? What 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 are we actually? Which of the talents are we developing? And at which time mm. are we developing them? Right. So right. you know the process of life is lengthy. It it takes a very long time. But to whatever extent certain goals and objectives I'm achieving. Um, I, a lot of it is very incremental, like I'll work on a, a project, you know, I, I, I will bite off intentionally more than I can chew and then I'll mm -hmm. go figure out how to do it. Um, right. you know, a lot of it, a lot of it in the past I've wrestled with, um, figuring it all out before I start and I've mm. ran into more problems in that regard than, success through failure, right? Figure it out one step back, two steps forward. I mean, we live in Northern Virginia, right? A lot of this, it was necessity for me to go get a couple of quotes from a contractor to renovate my bathroom. A bathroom like right. four foot by eight foot was like 15 grand. That was like the cheapest 
the cheapest bathroom model, model right? Total got, you know, we're trying to put, I mean, it's Northern Virginia. We're trying to put, you know, something nice, right? Stone, uh, you know, whatever. And I can tear it out, put the tile in, mess it all up, tear it out a second time, put it back in and still be cheaper than that, right? So, right. you know, there's a lot of latitude when you start talking about money and skill and talent. But I, I bring that example up because how do we ever develop the, if we don't ever endeavor, right? We're never going to develop the skill. We have to try. We have to fail. Mm -hmm. We have to figure it out. And then we figure out, well, gosh, I hate doing tile work. I'm going to hire that part out. And then maybe we do, right? Drywall, for instance, you know, drywall's very tough to make it look skimmed perfect. You know, I can hang drywall like nobody's business, but I typically tend to contract out, right? The, um, uh, taping and mudding, uh, and then I'll come back through and paint. But you know, kind of just because I don't like doing it. But here's a here's a here's a bit of context. I, I this is a funny story. So back right. to back to college days, right? I'm a poor sure. broke farm guy, you know, rubbing elbows with all these rich, you know, well to do folks at Georgetown, and I didn't have money for beer or pizza. So what do I do? I go get a um, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, a job uh, at one of these um, catering companies, right? So, you know, um, easy, easy, easy money, right? I, I show up in, in a rented tux uh, and, and I serve champagne, right? So very easy job. Well, that job, because it, they're always short of good people that can actually show up on time and smile and, you know, hand out hors d'oeuvres. For whatever reason, there's always a shortage of good people. So over the years, I've, I've worked in uh, catering and it's because it's a great night and weekend kind of gig. I, I remember when I came home uh, from overseas to Iraq and, you know, I was kind of transitioning and I took uh, one of these catering jobs. Uh, and the day that the morning of, I was digging a ditch. So it's like this, this, this coin phrase, you know, I'm a dig a ditch by day, tuxedo by night kind of guy. And what was funny, <laughs> and you know who you look up. like. Don't don't say that because I'm gonna pull it out. Yeah, yeah. So Dexter. I show up to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm hey. sure you've heard it. <laughs> but go ahead. I'm I, 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 I'm handy. I, you know, I get this silver, you know, sh a, a serving dish and this crystal, you know, glass of champagne, flute, whatever. And I'm handing right. it, and I look down at my nails, and I've got dirt underneath. I mean, I cleaned up everything, hair done, but I got dirt under my fingernails, handing out right. champagne. I mean, it's like. You know, so I'm a rough around the edges kind of guy. Here's here's another way. Here's another way to look at it. Um, uh, uh, a Prius, right? You know, cars, right? Sure. Um, I, I have a Prius C, one of these itty bitty little, the smallest one, cheapest one you could find. Right. Uh, I was commuting to work in D.C. and um, I needed gas. It was like 48, 50 miles per gallon. It's like, I love this thing. And then, and then I have an F three hundred and fifty with a flatbed, you know. So I'm a Prius <laughs> by day, you know, diesel engine, you know, tow a massive right. trailer with a tractor on it, kind of guy. So you know that that kind of dichotomy. So I, I only right, explain right. that because I am, you know, I, how I grew up, but I live in DC. Um, yeah, I'm I, you, you, a part of this is legacy, and you can't have a legacy without an amazing, wonderful, beautiful bride and. And, and my yes. better half, Loveland, is from the city of Man. You know, she worked in Manhattan and lived in the Bronx, and she was willing to marry a farm boy like me. So it's proof that God has a sense of humor. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you, you know, you 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 really start to understand that you know God stretches us, right? <clears throat> and, and what we're able to do now uh, versus what we actually think we can do. A lot of that is faith, you know, trusting in God that I may not have the skill, I may not have the time, or I may not have, you know, fill in the blank, but trusting mm -hmm. and relying in God and just praying for him to give you the desires of your heart. For me, you know, it was a garden. We um, ended up buying this little thousand square foot rambler uh, inside the beltway and um, uh we cleared the lot. Like, I mean, there was 30 trees. Like I showed up and <laughs> me and my uncle, like we paid a tree guy, cleared it. Right. I needed a spot for a 
grass and a garage and a garden. I wound up with an 8,000 square foot garden. I mean, it was, it was very, very hard for me to sell that place. But we had a fourth kiddo and that little matchbox of a house just wasn't enough. And so we had to sell it. So you, 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 you asked, how did I get the land? Well, we got the land uh, because, you know, that dream uh, it God put in my heart is still alive. And we moved in a subdivision on like a 0.19 of an acre spot, a bigger house, but no land. And so it was like, my wife was very kind and for the past several years, we've been looking for some land and we, we bought some land, you know, about an hour and a half away to have everything, garden, fruit trees, orchard, pole barn, you know, build, build a couple houses for the kids, all sorts of fun ideas. Maybe that's kind of what you're referring to is the litany of ideas I've kind of thrown at you over the years. Yeah. You know, and I think that there, and I'm glad you share that. There's a lot of people who, I would say consciously try to build some type of a legacy. Typically, you know, it's connected to something financial, right? You know, generational wealth and those cliches. And they're consciously trying to do that. But what it sounds like with you, Brian, is that it's just more of what your life is, your lifestyle, you know, and it's not necessarily something that where you're like, okay, kids, this is your legacy. You know, I'm like, no, this is who we are, right? This is our family name. And this is what we're doing, right? And that in and of itself embodies what the legacy is. Um, and I think that's even more powerful, to be honest with you, because it kind of teaches your children, right, that, okay, this is this is my family. This is who we are. And God has blessed you with a woman who's in alignment, right, with that. That how how key is that, right? For anybody who's listening and who's married, how key is it to have a, a, a spouse that's in alignment with what you you know what you're looking to do in your life? That by itself is, is amazing. I'm laughing because that alignment is elusive. At some points it is yes, and some points it's no. Of um, course it is. She's a woman and you're a man, so that's how it goes. <laughs> amen, amen. You well, know, here's here's a, here's a funny story. Here's a funny story. Mm -hmm. So. So uh, about about my wife and her level of support, you know, for a long time, uh, you know, I've, I've always I, I, I just tinker with things. Right. I'm kind of, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, pick up, pick up a wrench and turn it like I just fix stuff. And I love automotive mm -hmm. mechanics. And, um, you know, I, I, I having that 8000 square foot garden inside the Beltway, uh, you know, it was um, uh, I was talking to my wife, you know, gosh, you know, we really need a truck. You know, this was before we got the truck, the F-350. Um, and it was, it was, um, I'd like to take a diesel engine mechanic class, right? You know, I can buy a cheap truck and work on it and tinker with it. And she's like, no, no, no. And then finally, you know, I was like, well, hey, babe, you know, Northern Virginia Community College has this diesel engine mechanics class. <laughs> One semester, right? Let's just go take an intro to diesel engine mechanics. And it's like, yeah, you know, I don't know, 13 or 1400 bucks. And finally, you know, she's like, okay, okay, you know, we'll make, we'll, we'll plan for it. We'll make time in the schedule and you go take this class. And I got to looking around and I'm like, gosh, you know, this, this would be fun. And, and, and something, I don't know, this is a Halstead harebrained idea. I had, I had 1500 bucks in my hand. I was getting ready to go sign up for the class. And somehow this is where, you know, trusting in God and being led by the spirit, I find an old 13 uh, horsepower Kubota tractor for 1500 bucks. <laughs> right, right. So this is this is more more description as to uh, you know the way the way Halstead's mind works. So what do I end up doing? I go buy that tractor and it runs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, hey, you know, I could go read a bunch of books, which I I'm, I could do very well and learn a bunch of stuff, or I can buy a tractor, run it hard. And when it breaks, figure out how to fix it. So, you know, um, and that's what I did. And I had that tractor for several years. And guess what? Okay. It's, 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 it's gotten its money worth four or five times over. And I could sell it today for more than 1500 bucks. So it's like, you know, to what extent did that investment produce a return? Right? right. Absolutely. Um, you know, as we, as we start really thinking about kids, you know, you kind of touched on legacy. And it's like, to me... I think, I think there's, ah, I want to teach my kids how to please God. 
and mm-hmm. I want to teach my kids how to help others. Right. And there's a lot of ways to do that. There's no one way to do that. And yes, uh, some things may require some money and other things might not, you know, making some sandwiches and handing them out to, to the homeless, you know, in DC is, is, a, is more of an investment of time than it is of money. But how do you teach a kid compassion, right? How do you teach a kid awareness of things outside of themselves, right? You know, kind of, kind of those, uh, not, not just skills, pick up a hammer and use them, but actually character, Christ-like character worthy of imitation. Right. Um, so, you know, w- and we can kind of pause right here because I could go any number of ways with that, right? I got a couple of examples to dig in. No, please um, go go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. So, you know, uh, with respect to kind of my kids, um, yeah. Yeah, I really, I really am trying to teach my kids how to dream. Hmm. Um, you know how to pray to God for ideas, right? I, I think that's really, you know, part of it is, you know, ideas aren't in short supply. There, there's lots of ideas. Yeah. There's lots of dreams. You know, got you know, most most anybody can have a lot of you know. Um, intentions, yeah. but to actually start and say from idea to planning, um, yeah. my boy's seven and he's about to turn eight. And, you know, right now it was like, we went, you know, during the pandemic, we had a lot of, a lot of time. And one of the things I really wanted to, a goal I set out to do was to teach my kid how to, how to take an idea and put it into action. Right. And I kind of just you know, shared with him, Okay, you know, hey son, it, this this it was it was funny because it, 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 Jonathan said, "Hey dad, let's go get donuts before everybody wakes up." He had an idea, right? right. I was like, "Oh, that's a great idea." Okay, so how are we going to do it, right? And just broke it down, you know. Well, okay, hey, where are the keys to the car? Oh, okay. Well, which location are we going to go to? Krispy Kreme? We're going to go to Dunkin' Donuts? Where are we going to get the donuts? Right. The actual details of plan. Oh, you got some money? It takes money to buy donuts. I mean, just something so simple Absolutely. as going through the details mm-hmm. of planning. Okay, well, how far away is it? Okay, right. how much time is it going to? Can we actually do it before they wake up? He woke up early and came up with this idea. Awesome idea, son. Can we do it? Yeah, dad, let's do it. Okay. Takes about this much. Bust out a map. Just simple skills of planning a route and understanding time, right. travel time. You know, those are the fundamental element. I have an appointment with a potential lead of um, someone I'm going to sell some services to. Can I actually show up there on time? You know, seven year old knows about time and showing up on time, things like that. So, and then, you know, I was like, okay, we get there and okay, son, do you know what donuts they want? Oh, I don't know what donuts they want. Okay. Well, let's try some donuts. What do you think your sisters would like? He picked out a bunch and it just totally left up to him. It was like a bear claw and like some <laughs> girls don't like bear claw. He picked everything that he likes, right? Right. right. <laughs> it was great. So we get there. It was like, you know, uh, half the things the girls didn't like. So that was the, so from the idea to the planning to the actual action of jumping in the car, then it was teaching him how to evaluate. Okay. Hey son, would we do that again? Could we do that again? If we did it again, what would we do differently? What worked? Mm-hmm. What didn't work? My seven-year-old wrote down a flow chart with picture diagrams, you know, like a little <laughs> light bulb with some ideas. He had like idea, dad. Right. And it was like, you know, planning. He's like him sitting down at a desk, like with paper and drawing out a, a to-do list and then jumping in the car. It was like action was the car. And then it was like, I was so impressed that these are not complicated concepts in and of themselves, but to actually develop skill, like he has that now for the rest of his life to, yes. to, to consider <clears throat> and ponder and really think through, to actually think, is this a good decision? Oh, wow, I made a bad mis- decision. Don't be afraid of failure. What would you do different, son? You know, I don't have to, like, scold him. Gosh, really failed. Well, okay, hey, what did we learn? 
you know, examples of what not to do are just as valuable, in my opinion, as examples of what to do. Right. Because I because it's it's there's there's <laughs> there's a lot to learn. And so, you know, what, what what to steer clear from has often guided me more than what I'm actually guiding towards. So, you know, no, I, I, I love that example. Go ahead. I was just going to, you know, when we actually teach our here, here's here's a, here, here's how I'm teaching my kids how to dream. Right. You know, I've done a lot of planning right, with this property, you know, to actually do some of these tasks. Right. It requires extensive planning. And so it's, it's really mm -hmm. hard to teach all those elements to a kid. But here's what I can teach. Right. They're running around playing and they see they see what the land is. And then, hey, Jonathan, here's some pictures. We're going to bring a 40,000 pound excavator and this thing is going to tear up some ground. Right. Get excited. Right? right. Well, OK, great, Dad. Thanks. You know, runs the TV, you know, in one ear and out the other. Well, Jonathan, guess what we're doing tomorrow? You're going to come with daddy and we're going to come. You bring the whole family down and you're going to see the excavator. Man, he got on that excavator, brought him up in the cab and we're, you know, running the boom and digging a hole and he's excited. So, you know, to whatever extent you can connect concepts and ideas with actions, right? Uh, another way. So my, my two-year-old, right? Um, right? I jump on a ladder. And I've got a hammer and I'm, I'm beating something. I'm beating the air with a hammer. And my, my two-year-old's like, what are you doing, dad? I love it when my kids ask, what are you doing? I intentionally try to do these like wild and crazy things, right? right. I'm building a pole barn. No, you're not. <laughs> In my mind, I am, right? right. I, I, I have this idea and I've already, you know, I've I bought my trusses, right? We bought land, right? I, you know, we've got things to, to put, you know, footers and concrete in the ground, but she doesn't see all of that, but she sees daddy on a ladder with a hammer, you know? And then, so what, what I envision is now once I'm putting up siding on the pole barn, she sees me again, daddy on the ladder, driving a nail, putting up board and batten on the pole barn, right? So, you know, how to connect kind of bookends from, you know, this idea of what you'd like to accomplish to actually accomplishing it, right? And, 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 and touch points along the way. Here's another one, right? The topography of our land is wonderful. There's a really okay. good spot where I'm going to put about a one acre pond, okay? You're going to put a one acre pond. Yeah, yeah. Got to go fishing. Complete with Got to go swimming. <laughs> right. Sure, why not? <laughs> So, so here's daddy. How, how do how do I teach my two year old about topography? Rainwater, you know, drains. Everything's going to go in this little spot, and it's perfect. Okay, and I can't teach her that, but I can I can I can lay on the ground and 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 pretend to swim. Daddy, what are you doing? Right. So how do how do I tell her a pond? You know, how do I tell her that someday, right here on this spot, is where the pond's going to go? Right. Connecting these these um, ideas and, and that sticks. Right. You know, that that weird sort of uh, uh, memory, uh, you know, is is, is what. A, and then for them to then someday see the pond and, you know, that kind of thing is, is how I um, try to teach my kids very, very basic things uh, about dreams. Dude, that's amazing because it's. <clears throat> you know, you're giving your children vision, right? And, you know, the more I listen yeah. to you, the more I can see how your upbringing just really has colored, right? And filled in so much of your life because growing up on farmland, you have so much open expanse, right? Yeah. And you have so much possibility. You have so much opportunity, right? And, you know, what you're doing is what's natural to you, right? What's incumbent to you is just to pass that on to your, your children, no matter what, no matter what profession they go into in their lives, right. exactly. no matter what right. direction you're giving them something that's priceless. Right. And you're giving them a part of yourself, right. Which I, I, I highly commend. And again, I just kind of look at the, the, the flip side of the coin, like with myself and I'm thinking like, man, like kind of growing up in the, like in the city of Baltimore, right. 
growing up in a dense area, in an urban area where people are on top of each other, right? And unfortunately, so many young men and women didn't have the open expanse, didn't have the vision, right, given to them, didn't have the dreams given yeah. to them. And a, and a lot of that is because of the topography of the land in terms of everything that's on top of it, right? And yeah. because of the... Um, I, I think just be just because of the, the urban denseness, right? And it would be great how it would be great if children whose minds are just open and free, no matter where they are, would be able to have that that possibility, right? And have that opportunity. And God has blessed you, Brian, to be able to give that, right? You know, to your kids, right? And for allow you know allow them to be dreamers again. I just firm, firmly believe that it's gonna it's gonna continue to 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 go down, right? Um, and to go deeper now, you, when you have this land, so tell me what you plan on doing in terms of a garden, right? And in terms of kind of growing your own food and having that, you know, in terms of excuse me, sustainability for your family. Um, sure, sure. Well, I think anybody can take steps, right? Anybody <clears throat> can can have a, a a container garden. Anybody can. So this is something I do pretty much every winter, right? I'll go to the grocery store and I'll buy some turnip, any root vegetable, turnips, beets, uh, rutabaga, you name it, put it in soil. And the actual harvested produce, chances are, uh, I mean, it, hopefully it's organic and it hasn't been you know, sprayed, but you put something back in dirt, plant it back in dirt and do it. And uh, I got a video I'll have to send you. Sure. It starts to leaf out. The, you know, you, the, the plant wants to live. And my kids are over inside the house during the middle of winter, plucking uh, right. turnip greens and eating the salad, live salad. Uh, you know, we, we it's there's it's it's not complicated. It's very, very easy. But you've got to kind of and, and I really One of the ways I think it's important for God uh, to get glory is for us to use our talents in ways that brings God glory. Right. So right. for us to you know, everything I do. Right. I've sent emails. I, I get guys out there. Right. Hey, guys, come 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 work. But come see the land. Come connect with the land. Come get out of the city. Come come join me uh, over the years. You know, we've had teens at the property. I mean, we, we cut up a bunch of those uh, rounds. These are mature teens. But, uh, you know, my wife and I were part of the teen ministry. And we were doing axe throwing, right? Crazy stuff. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> having fun. Uh, uh, another way is recently, uh, you know, I was asked to build a garden for this nonprofit. Uh, I helped with a grant. They, they got some grant money. They wanted to teach inner city school kids, you know, at-risk youth about gardening. And I was given a budget and I tore up a backyard. I hauled in, uh, I don't know, 20 some yards of uh, mulch and did a uh, no-till uh, back to Eden garden. And this was year one. And like, I'm almost speechless because when you take someone who has never experienced getting their hands in the dirt, not just playing with dirt, but actually planting a seed. Right. And this was over a couple of months, right? In the springtime to, you know, end of August. Like I put a cold frame, we did a season extender, tarp, it was awesome. But I mean, for them to actually see this seed was in my hand and I planted it and now I'm eating a, a, a squash, right? Um, like it, it really helped convict my heart that that more people need to learn how to garden. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, um, right. So it's not just something that that I think we're passing on <laughs> to our kids. I mean, to the extent that I'm sharing, you know, my dreams and goals and visions with anyone and everyone who will listen, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know. The, the, the very you know precipice for this interview was I was sharing my ideas with you, um, you know, 
and and the opportunity to save seeds. I mean, this this is something. That, so so when you talk about a legacy, always having something to give, right? You know, teaching you know teaching my kids, hey, be willing to help. Hey, uh, time, talent, treasure. But yes. you know, uh, to the extent that seeds aren't. I mean, like I have hundreds and hundreds of seeds. Like gardens aren't you know, cost should never be a reason why people can't start a seed, like can't start a garden. Right. Um, more of it is, you know, know how you know, there's several things that might stop someone from starting a garden and, and, you know, well, it costs money to buy seed. You know, it may only be a few dollars, but, or maybe, you know, some soil, right. Or maybe the pots or whatever, you know, um, you can put seeds, you know, along a sidewalk. Uh, you, you don't need your own space, but I mean, sunflowers, right? Um, uh, it's it's just one of those things I think is is so important for folks to connect with that if you want to learn, ask mm -hmm. someone, anyone, and and chances are if somebody doesn't know, they'll point someone to the person who may know, right? So that's that's right. if you want to talk about a legacy. I tell my kids to ask people questions. Please help me. Right? Those are those are my three favorite words. <laughs> hmm. um, you know mm -hmm. how to how to ask uh, for knowledge. You know, we talk about praying for ideas, and you know, God, please give me wisdom and discernment on how to execute this. Right? You know, right. ideas and ideas, <laughs> and actions and actions, but really prioritize your efforts to be effective and efficient, right? Uh, you know, you talk about this land and wanting to plant a garden. I've got to build soil. Here's a story. Here's another story. So how do you prepare for something, right? Okay. We have a family of six, my wife and I and four kids. We eat a lot of eggs, probably <laughs> three, four days a week. And when we eat eggs, it's probably about a dozen eggs per breakfast, okay? In my garage, I have three years worth of eggshells. I save all my eggs. <laughs> I have been planning this land purchase for five or six years. I mean, looking for the right land, looking for the timing, the money, right? right? Everything. The stars and the moon had to align. But something I could do to help keep the dream alive, every time I save those eggshells, my kids see me doing a step taking a step towards my dream. And it's like those touch points that remind us that help keep the dream alive. You know, right. uh, uh, Pinterest, right? Oh my gosh. If you have a dream, I don't care what it is. There's a Pinterest for your dream, right? Mm -hmm. So gardening, you know, trellis and fence and how to lay out your garden and what to plant where. I mean, you know, you want to talk about garden, just, visually keeping your dream alive and reviewing uh, pictures, right? Uh, um, you know, so uh, you asked a question about our garden. Uh, you know, right now we're propagating some figs. Um, you know, we, we took a bunch of cuttings from a family's fig tree up in New York um, and we're rooting them to plant some of our own fig trees, right? Fig, you know, mm -hmm. most things should be free. Right, right. Uh, there was a plum tree on the property. I cut probably 30 cuttings. Um, you know, we're trying to root those. Maybe 90% of them will die. But if only 10% of them live, I've got 10, 10 little baby trees, right? Um, you know, going to an orchard, right, uh, to, to volunteer and, and help, uh, you know, pretty much anything that they prune and cut could be rooted or grafted or, you know, it depends what your goals are, but in you know, a type of variety, but I have seeds from my grandmother's uh, fruit trees, her, her apple tree. Uh, she doesn't know the name. She bought it, you know, 30, 40 years ago and it's her favorite tree. Now there's four or five apple trees. It might not be the exact tree, but to, you know, when you talk about legacy, what legacy has been given to us than for us to turn around and give to our kids or others, right? Um, I, I think about that a lot because it's not even just uh, uh, how how are we are, are we teaching our kids to have a legacy, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when you really start saying legacy, it's like, wow, I want to teach my kids how to dream. I want to teach my kids how to chase their dreams. And, you know, I want to teach my kids, you know, the, the kind of that, that there, 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 there's freedom in going after your dreams and never giving up and, you know, little success here and little failure there, but, you know, constantly taking steps towards your dreams and never giving up, like, man, there's, there's joy in that. And, yeah, you know, absolutely. I want to teach my kids that, you know, so, so there's, I, I, I could expound indefinitely on, you know, what I'm, what I'm teaching my kids or trying to anyways, hopefully they, 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 <laughs> they never forget it. Right. In one ear and out the other now, but maybe someday, hopefully they'll pull back and, uh, you know, consider, uh, it, but, um, uh, yeah, well, sorry. You know, and no, I don't think it'll go in one ear and not the other, especially with your children. You know, the Bible does teach us that to teach a child in the way that they should go. Right. And, you know, as they get older, they will not depart from it. You know, and God's word does not come back empty. Right. And let me tell you something. I mean, I got two teenagers and sometimes I'm like, man, was, <laughs> God, I need your word to not come back empty on these girls. Yeah. But it doesn't. And God is faithful. You know, he's faithful and true. And I think the things that you're doing now right? Um, again, our manifestation of the things that, you know, you've been dreaming of your entire life, right? The things that you've been a part of your entire life. And again, it, to me, I don't, I'm not, part of me is even feel like, okay, is this actual like intentional or is it just your, your nature, right? It's who you are, right? We, we kind of do the things that we are. It's your character. And that's what, that's the beauty of it, right? I don't necessarily feel like you're like putting all this intentional planning and blueprinting and effort into being Brian Holstead. Like it's who you are. Like it comes so natural. And I think that's the beauty of it, right? And I think that's a lesson that I can take and I think that's a lesson a lot of people can take, right? Just to kind of be who we are and let let those things naturally evolve, naturally change. Um, I do think that we have to we do have to work on work on ourselves, right? The thing, the areas of our character where we can grow and mature and change, right? And then you know, kind of other areas to improve. And I think that that's that's absolutely you know the truth. And I'm sure that you're doing that personally, you know. Um, as we kind of begin to to kind of finish off here. You know, we're beginning off the year 2023. You know, what are some areas personally where you want to, you know, grow, right? Where you want to change, um, you know, yourself first and, and maybe even some things for your family uh, specifically for this year? Yeah, yeah. So, um I like to ask questions of old people, right? I was asking this this older guy, you know, about his hobbies. Hey, what's retirement like, right? <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> I mean, I have a countdown timer, right? I'm trying to, I work for the federal government. The minimum retirement age is 57 and a half, you know, unless they change it between now and then. But, um, you know, I have goals to mm -hmm. retire and, you know, do some of these uh, efforts uh, full time as, as opposed to nights and weekends. Um, but, but I got to ask him this guy, you know, tell, tell, you know, tell me about your day. What do you do? He's like, well, I spent a lot of time with my wife and I was like, okay, cool. Right on. And he's like, I used to play golf and golf is very expensive. I was like, oh, okay. Uh -huh. And it takes me away from my wife because she doesn't like to play golf. And I was like, well, do you play golf much anymore? He's like, no, I don't. Cause I'd rather spend time with my wife. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. Right. You know, so to the extent that we temper our dreams to grab our brides by the hand and walk together, um, you know, I, I think, I think there's an element where we've got to, uh, whatever our plans are, uh, you know, align our dreams that, Okay, great. He may play golf and he may, instead of doing it every day, he goes, enjoys it and he does it every now and again. But for the most part, the priorities, you know, when you talk about 2023 for me, it's prioritizing my marriage and my family. Amen. Um, that, that guy went on to say something to the effect, you know, find a hobby that keeps you at home. Um, 
find a hobby that doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, and I was like, wow, gardening, gardening fits the bill, right? Keeps right. me at home, you know, um, something the family can do together. And I mean, I've got pictures of us picking cherries at my grand folks farm. So this is four generations, my grandfather, my dad, me, and then my seven year old boy picking cherries, four generations, um, you know, a beautiful, beautiful thing. But uh, wanting to make sure that, okay, well, hey, honey, what would you like to plant in the garden, right? This isn't Brian driving it so much as, hey, kids, what do you want to plant in the garden, right? Uh, the best way to get kids to eat vegetables is for them to pick it, right? Like, not a lot of the cherry tomatoes made it into the house, right? The kids were outside just from 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 vine to mouth, my pole beans, right? You know, teaching my kids how to eat pole beans. Um, same thing, right? Snap or snap peas, right? You know, at certain yeah, times yeah. of the year, man, they are just sweet and juicy. Um, so it's that kind of activity. Um, we had okra that were like, you know, six and a half, seven foot tall. And it's like the kids look up at it, you know, it's just, it's something special to go out there and cut. We make a lot of soups, right? So put okra in the soup. Um, you know, the kids will eat it. Uh, eggplant. We, we had okra and eggplant and they would eat eggplant because they would go outside and wow, cut the eggplant and come inside, cut it up and put it in some soup. Um, so, you know, to whatever extent I'm able is to include my wife and my family in the steps, right? They, they may not, you know, sun up to sundown, I'm going to work. And, you know, on a weekend, you know, I don't get a lot of time um, uh, uh, because it's, you know, uh, tough, right? At this time, young kids. So, you know, uh, a little bit of time here and a little bit of time there, but consistently planning, I have these weekends, one weekend a month planned out for the entire year that I go to the property and work, right? Uh, and if I'm able to burn a day of leave here or, you know, take a half day or something, go down and do some stuff, you know, but actually um, uh, that level of planning, um, you know, try to try to work on some of this stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun, but it's, hard work. It's the kind of hard work that's fun. If, and if you can find that, man, you're good. I'm going to tell you, B, <clears throat> if it's one lesson I got from this entire podcast, I'm going to keep it real, right? Is if I could plant a garden, right? Build a garden. And if I could plant Chick-fil-A and Chipotle, my kids would be happy because that's all they want to eat. <laughs> if I could plant pizza and chicken nuggets and they would get their hands dirty and dig down. That's all. And so I'm going to have my kids listen to this portion of the podcast because you're right. Like there's a, there's a connection with the food that you're eating, right? It's not coming in a box, right? It's not coming necessarily frozen. It's not coming from some place where you just kind of throw it in a cart or whatever. Um, not necessarily saying all that stuff is bad, but the amount of processing that sure. goes into to so much is inherently just unhealthy for us. Um, and, um, you know, my wife, while wow, this is probably like 10, almost 10 years ago or so, just made the decision, our family, we're just going to start eating as much organic food as possible. I know that we talked about this before. And so, Probably in my house right now, we're probably it was probably, in the past it was probably a, a larger percentage, but now we're probably at about sixty percent of yeah. my the stuff in my house is organic in some yeah. form or fashion, um, and that's just kind of how it is. You know, it's definitely more expensive, but it's become a lifestyle. You know, for for kind of how we eat, um, unless we kind of go out somewhere, right? And it's the chocolate layer, Chick Fil A type of type of stuff. Um, but the thing is. Again, those that lifestyle, right? And number one, it's going to help your children with their health, right? You know, just growing and 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 it, and it helps you with your health, and it helps your wife with her health, and it and it provides an example, um, not only just for the for the physical aspects and, and and benefits, but for again the character growth, for the gratitude, for the perspective, right? And I think that's probably the biggest word for me. And what you share is like, you're giving your children perspective. 
right? And, you know, that perspective definitely will, will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Um, so look, man, this has been an amazing conversation. Um, I look forward to, you know, what I'd like to do, you know, is probably on my YouTube channel. I'd like to kind of get some timeline pictures of your land if, sure. if we'd be able to do that, because I'd love to be able to share your story, right? With everyone. Um, kind of where the land is now, kind of what you're doing. So all the things that you send to me so we can arrange that because I think there's in and of, it, of itself, there's a story to tell, right? There's a compelling story to tell. So how, are you going to be able, are we willing to do that together? Only if you come take the photos, uh, you have to connect <laughs> with the land. I, um, I'll do you one better. Yeah, yeah. Our podcast engineer is a professional photographer. I'll have him come down to do it. His name is Anton Keith. So well, I might accompany him. Well, you know, it, it, but, but, but this farm, like kind of the core tenant of our farm, right, is right. that it's the Lord's farm, right? We're going to have chickens. So, you know, when, when, when you want eggs, mm -hmm. you come. Lift the chickens behind up and get the eggs. Okay, <laughs> you will come out there. I don't. I don't deliver produce, right? Uh, if you want produce, you can come out there uh, and have all the produce you want for free. Mm -hmm. You just got to come out there. Uh, I, I, I'm going to make some T-shirts up. We'll work for food, right? I trade uh, time uh, uh, for for produce, so. Right. Um, you know, cause, cause that's so much has been given to me, you know, what, what is, what is it to give back? It, it's not just, um, right. The, 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 the get feed a fish, you know, give somebody a fish, but teach them how to fish in coming out there to, to, to actually, uh, uh, get produce. Right. I mean, people, right. When you, when you pick, when you pick several bushels of beans, like mm -hmm. that's enough beans for the entire year. You come out there for one day and you can bag them up in Ziploc bags, throw them in your freezer, and you have enough beans for the whole year. People don't really connect that way or really think about, you know, canning, right? You, know, you wanna learn how to can? We'll teach you how to can. Like anybody who, the, the, the knowledge is available, right? Right. Um, it's free. I mean, YouTube has, has, has I have learned more from YouTube than I have from any one person, right? So to the extent that the knowledge is there, then what is, then what is, then what is lacking, right? There are other elements to making the dream happen. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, and, and I think it is, it's motivation. You got it. You got to, um, you got to plant those seeds of your dreams, right? You got to do something with your dreams. If you guys, mm. you know, want to, you know, have, have a, <laughs> come have a garden, right? Uh, right. You know, with that 8,000 square foot garden, a neighbor came and planted a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, we've always included anyone who's willing, everyone who wants to, uh, to participate. So I'll take you up on it. Oh, absolutely. And I, you know, and, and I want to, I, I really want to bring my family, you know, I think it'll be great uh, for them to, to come, you know, especially the girls. And so absolutely we will, you know, offline, we will arrange some time and we'll all get down there and I'll bring my professional photographer with me. You know, he's really looking forward to it. He can't wait. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that we're going to make that happen. So listen uh, again, Brian, thank you so much for your time. This has been I love this to hear your story, you know, and the things that you're sharing, right? And the things that you're doing in your life. You know, there's a, like, I would guess like 99.9% .9 of the podcasts that I listen to that are out today, right? right? Their goal and aim is to have someone famous, someone who has a million followers, someone whose name is recognizable because it draws you. Truth be told with me, like what's more compelling is someone like you, Brian, your story, right? You're a friend, right? You are a real, you know, kind of tangible person. And the things that you're doing for your family are things that we can all connect with, right? And to me, honestly, that's far more compelling 
it's far more attractive, it's far better. And it's something that I'm looking to do here kind of on the vision to mission podcast mm -hmm. is to connect with people like you. Um, because again, I, I think there's a lot more substance, you know, there. So thank you so much for sharing your story um, yeah. and sharing your time with us today. Well, thank you. And um, to God be the glory. To God be the, and that's how I end all my podcasts. Yeah. When you listen to the music. <laughs> The music says, and to God be the glory. So we, that's a great way to end this podcast. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Vision to Mission podcast with Mr. Brian Halstead. Share this with as many people as you can. Check us out on our YouTube channel and subscribe. Love you all. Peace and God bless.